Email read an article on Sunday about a leaked database showing mass infiltration of UK firms by the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP for short. A register in the database shows nearly 2 million members of the CCP are working in more than 79 organizations all over the world. They include British consulate in Shanghai, leading defense and technology firms, big pharmaceutical companies, as well as universities. AstraZeneca, Rolls-Royce, HSBC, and Jaguar Land Rover are all on the list. The influence of the CCP stretches to just about every corner of British society. Detailed analysis reviews that the pharmaceutical giants, Pfizer and AstraZeneca, both involved in the development of coronavirus vaccine, employed a total of 123 party members. Airbus, Boeing, and Rolls-Royce also employed hundreds of party members. More than 600 of them were working across 19 branches of HSBC and Standard Chartered in 2016. On the issue of Hong Kong pro-democracy movement, both HSBC and Standard Chartered said they were supporting the national security law imposed on Hong Kong by Beijing. HSBC has also uh, been reported to have cracked down on clients with ties to the pro-democracy movement. It was believed that the register was leaked by a Chinese whistleblower to a dissident who passed it on to IPAC via an encrypted messaging app called Telegram. IPAC is an inter-parliamentary alliance on China, a group of about 150 lawmakers around the world, united by their concerns of influence and activities of the Chinese regime. After getting the list authenticated by experts, IPAC chose four media outlets to release the story. The list contains the details of Communist Party members in Shanghai, including their names, position in the party, birthday, national ID number, and ethnicity, some even with addresses and phone numbers, from 2016. This database is unique because it reviews those members living and working all over the world. The lid of how CCP operates in the West has been lifted. Now, some of you may not understand what the big deal is uh, for a Communist Party member of China working uh, in different parts of the world. Well, the CCP is not an ordinary political party. Allow me to share with you the oath one has to take when he or she is initiated into the CCP. It is my will to join the Communist Party of China uphold the party's program, observe the provisions of the party constitution, fulfill a party member's duties, carry out the party's decisions, strictly observe party's discipline, guard party's secrets, be loyal to the party, work diligently, fight hard for communism throughout my life, be ready at all times to sacrifice my all for the party and the people, and never betray the party. This sounds more like an initiation oath for a gang, doesn't it? One interesting fact for you. The Chinese Communist Party is not a registered political party in China. It's not even a registered entity, full stop. So it is not subject to any laws or regulations associated with organizations. In addition, the CCP is maintained primarily by Chinese taxpayers, regardless of whether they are members of the party because it is the only ruling party in China. The Daily Mail mentioned that there is no evidence that anyone on the party membership list has spied for China. I found the comment a bit unnecessary. First of all, what is espionage or intelligence work? In real life, intel work happens on different levels. Not all of them work like 007. It could be a small piece of information, like who's in the office and who is not on a particular day, or the knowledge about family troubles of a scientist working on a leading defense project. As long as the net is cast wide over an extended period of time, even when each provides just a little bit of information, Beijing would already have a good collection of valuable intel to work with and you won't be able to get any evidence. At a minimum, these CCP members will work as influencers 
talking positively about China in the organizations they work in. So the people working there have a sympathetic view toward the communist state. The Chinese government is an expert in running long-term massive influence operations. Secondly, even if some of those members of CCP do not believe in communism, most of them will cooperate with the CCP when asked. Because the Communist Party rules by fear, they, these people have families and loved ones living in China. In China, a party membership entitles you privileges. When it comes to university acceptance, promotion at the workplace, and opportunities to visit abroad, you will get priority. But these perks can be easily stripped and replaced with punishments if you are found to have betrayed the party or violated its rules. So many would feel obliged to carry out the party's command. I had a friend in America many years ago who was trapped in this. He did what the CCP asked him to do for a couple of years. After he first arrived in America, he was asked to make American friends and need to report progress from time to time. However, after he became more appreciative of American way of life and American values, he wanted to break away from the party, but he wasn't allowed to. At the end, he had to disappear. He suddenly cut off communications with all of his friends and I have never heard from him since. I wanted to tell you another story today. It happened right here in the UK, and I don't think it was talked about by anyone else yet. You probably have heard about the University of Nottingham. Did you know that for about 12 years, this leading British public university was headed by a Chinese Communist Party member, a nuclear physicist? In July 2001, former director of Shanghai Nuclear Research Institute of China Science Academy, Professor Yang Fujia from Shanghai was appointed as the sixth chancellor of the University of Nottingham. He stayed on until January of 2013. Yang joined the CCP at the age of 19. He was one of the first two Chinese nuclear scientists selected by Beijing to work or study at the world's leading nuclear research facility, the Niels Bohr Institute in Denmark, as a visiting scholar in the 1960s. For two years, uh, being a member of the CCP for more than eight years uh, by then gave him an advantage over other young artists who were being considered for this opportunity. Yang told a very telling story to a Chinese media in 2019 of his days at the Niels Bohr Institute, where he befriended a visiting scholar from America. In his own words, under the circumstances, I gave up signing my name on the joint research paper as a co-author. The American scientist was very moved because he felt I did bulk of the work. This incident paved the way for my future development because the American scientist worked at the U.S. Weapons Research Institute, he later invited me to visit his facility. As a result of this, Chinese delegates visited the weapons research facilities twice. Uh, Yu Ming, father of China's hydrogen bomb, joined the visit in 1983. That was his only trip abroad. During his tenure at the University of Nottingham as a chancellor, Yan helped to set up another campus in the city of Ningbo in China, the UNNC. Now this was in 2004, and he took the role of president of UNNC. Uh, but you know what? The UNNC has embedded in its structure a branch of the Chinese Communist Party. UNNC has an official party secretary, Mr. Ying Xiong. Uh, who is also the executive director of the university, a member of the leadership team. According to the bio published on the school website, Yin has successively won the title of Outstanding Party Member of Ningbo City. In addition, the chairwoman of the board, Xu Yafen, is also a senior CCP member. In fact, that was the first line of her bio on the school website. So obviously they're very proud of, of that. Uh, now you have the top three Chinese members of the leadership team all firmly aligned with the policies and agenda of the CCP.
Uh, installing a CCP branch in schools and companies is a standard practice of the Chinese regime uh, to keep things under control. Um, so from kindergartens to universities, from Alibaba to Huawei, um, it all works the same. Think of the CCP as a beast with many sprawling limbs reaching out to every organization it can. The CCP keeps a particularly watchful eye over universities to prevent the brewing of any pro-democracy thinking. And interestingly, this didn't seem to make any difference to the UK's Quality Assurance Agency, or QAA. Now, UNNC was audited and recognized by QAA as having fully met UK's teaching standard. The diploma obtained at the UNNC in China has equal weight as the one obtained in the UK. Uh, the UNNC became another tool for the CCP to develop and foster pro-CCP relationships. Italian professor Michel Geraci taught economics at UNNC for years. During his tenure there, Geraci was a few key people drafting the framework of the Memorandum of Understanding and helped to push Italy to join China's Belt and Road Initiative. The Belt and Road Initiative, as many of you know, is a highly controversial project of the Chinese government. It is called by some nations, China's Death Trap. In June 2018, Geraci landed a top job in the Italian government, the Under Secretary of State for Economic Development. He enthusiastically promoted measures and deals that welcomed Chinese inroads in Italy including in critical infrastructure. He even called for exchange of information with China in the area of public security at a time when Beijing was criticized for increasing surveillance over its own people. Gerachi lost his job in October 2019 as a county government reshuffled and pro-China policies fell out of favor with the Italian public. He recently announced that he will be returning to the UNNC to teach. Uh, there are many more stories I can share with you on how the Communist China infiltrated the UK and other democracies in the West. Uh, through espionage, bribery, and technology, Beijing has been playing this influence game very well, unfortunately. I laugh when I hear people keep saying Russia is the number one threat. Somehow, Russia has become the convenient excuse of many corrupted politicians and media to turn a blind eye to problems caused by Beijing. The 2020 U.S. general election has allowed us to see how badly the U.S. media and politicians have been corrupted by the CCP. I believe the extent of corruption is even worse in the UK. And there is a book that is really worth reading, Hidden Hand by Clive Hamilton and Mario Oberg. It is a rare book that gives insights into the Chinese Communist Party's influence in Europe and North America. Some of the stories in the books may give you chills. Now, going back to the report on the leaked China data, the timing of the reports seems to be perfectly in sync with some other things that are happening related to China. The U.S. Director of National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe, is due to report on the foreign interference any day now. He has suggested in his recent interviews that China did meddle in the 2020 general election. The increasingly strong rhetoric and evidence against the Chinese Communist Party does make you wonder if some major actions are on the horizon. This is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed uh, my video and if you have, please subscribe and turn on your notification for future episodes. Thank you for watching and see you next time.